to get the word in your face international. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. Our God is good. He is good in all of his ways. And his ways are so awesome and worth, worth finding out. His ways are worth finding out. I thank him because of the soul salvation that he gives us. I thank him because of the rest that he gives us. I, I thank him because he is who he is and he is so good. We, we're speaking of the God who created the universe and all that there is in it. We're talking about the one who sent his, his own son in the likeness of the flesh that we live in, that we walk in, that we breathe in every day. The, he, he sent his son in the likeness of this flesh, this flesh and blood body that you live in every day, whose thought processes are always processing what it sees and what it hears and what it smells and what it touches and what it tastes. And I say all of those five senses the right way, but we're always working through this physical body to understand the life that we live, to live the life that we live but the father who created all things sent us his son in Hebrews chapter 1 it says out of the Berean study Bible uh, one on, on many uh, verse 1 Hebrews 1 1 on many past occasions and in many different ways God spoke to our fathers through the prophets but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom he has made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his nature, upholding, upholding all things by his powerful word. After that he provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. This is like poetry to me. That is so, that word right there makes my heart stand out and look to him and go, awe. Oh, I am in awe with the living God who created all things, who sent his son into the world, sent himself into the world to save us. This is how much God loves what he created. He, he, he has made a place for us in himself. And we come by his son, who he is appointed heir of all things. If we look in Romans, we see that we've been made heirs and joint heirs with God. With God. He's so awesome in, in, in how he put this together, how he has called us to come out of the darkness and into the light. He, it's so awesome, the whole process of it. It causes us to, in order to understand it, you have to learn how to submit yourself to him, to go through the hurts and the trials and the pains, calling out on his name, having Abba in your mouth. That's in Romans chapter 8 too. It says that we, you know, we follow by the Spirit of God to know Him. He leads us and He guides us into all truth. When we, when we look over here in Romans, and I'll, I'll look real quick. Where's Romans? <laughs> Romans chapter 8. But first, in 7, oh, I'm not going to go into 7, but stay in Romans chapter 8. He says, start in verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's for those who say, it's, you know, you're so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. <laughs> because the carnal mind is enmity with, against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. 
But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be, that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is, li is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised but if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwells in you. That's never been so plain to me as right now. It can only get clearer and clearer as we keep coming to the Most High God. No matter what the situations and circumstances of life are, we've been given a word in our mouth. I'll get to that one. Okay. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, mind, will, and emotions, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of your mind, will, and emotions, you, you shall, the deeds of your body, you shall live. Mind, will, and emotions, your soul. I say that because, you see, the flesh in itself, the, the skin on your body, and the bones in your body, it can't operate without the, without the soul. The mind, will, and emotions control your physical body. And whatever a man thinks, so is he. However you think, that's, that's how you are. That's why you have to be spiritually minded. You have to want, desire to follow after the Spirit because you understand what Christ Jesus has done for you. The one who's been appointed heir of all things has really he has set us free. Set us free from the law of sin and death. And to tell you the truth, I don't really believe that we even know what those are. But God is God, the Father of heaven and earth. He, he wants to teach us all things. He wants us to know exactly what that means. But it means sitting down and learning of him. It means seeking him while he may be found. Sitting down and learning of him in the midst of the situations and circumstances of life. They raise up hard and they got the flesh rising high and you're screaming and you're venting and you're crying and you're scratching your head, you're pulling out your hair, you're worrying on the inside. You've got strife and envy and grief and all kinds of things going on the inside. Your hair is falling out. you got all kinds of diseases and all types of just high blood pressure, all this stuff is going on inside of you. And all we have to do is sit down. Sit down and learn of Him. So this is the God who is faithful that promised that He would supply all of our need and if we need knowledge, if we need wisdom, He will give it to us. Uh, you might have to chase me on this one because in Colossians chapter 1 it says right here that in one, let's start in verse 2, it says that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all the riches of the full assurance of understanding and to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wit and wisdom and knowledge. Jesus Christ has been appointed heir of all things. All wisdom and knowledge. God has passed to him all wisdom and knowledge. Those who believe on him have life. He comes giving us life and life more abundantly. This is the life we're talking about, the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God and the, and the knowledge of Christ. And he he, wants, he tells us in, in James chapter 1, I believe it is, that we can ask for wisdom and He will give it to us. He will pour it in liberally. For whatever the situation is, for whatever, whatever the circumstance is, we, we, we wait on the, the knowledge of God to rise up in our remembrance. And we speak that that we hear 
we act out that which he has given us. <laughs> and we praise the Lord. That's, that was Colossians chapter 2. And read more. <laughs> praise the Lord. That, that was a really good chapter, chapter 2 in Col Colossians. Okay, back to Hebrews. Verse 18, it says, For in that he himself have suffered being tempted as he is able oh my goodness come here come on we were in chapter one No, we were in Romans chapter 8. <laughs> I'm looking at Hebrews. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body you will live for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the holy spirit the spirit of the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. And I read for you uh, Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 17. Praise be to God. It all starts with, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death. The mind is going to and fro. Don't know what to do or how to do this or how to do that. Don't know how to handle any situation that is coming before us. Or at least we handle it in our own strength. Only not only to, for the glory to be for ourselves. Look and see what I've done. Not look and see what the Lord has done. When the Lord does it, souls are, are turned to Christ. Souls are one for the kingdom of God. When we do it, people look at us. Sometimes we need to just be still and know that he is God and learn what it is for him to bring that word to our remembrance. Learn what it is to call out on his name and wait for the answer. It's called being still and knowing that he is God. Like it says in what is, what's Psalm, Psalm 46, be still and know that he is God. James chapter 4 is another one of my very favorites. Because Many of us go through the trials of this life, trials, temptations, not understanding what's really being required of us, that we take possession of our soul by the Spirit of God who teaches us to war in the Spirit, teaches us how to fight a spiritual fight rather than fighting with our flesh. See, we look at things after the outward man and try to manage them, and that's why we end up sick, and that's why we end up, you know, with all kinds of things going on in our mind. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. Anyway, chapter 4, it says, It says in verse 6, But he gives more grace. 
Wherefore he says, God resists the proud, the proud, resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. No, that was two sentences. Submit yourselves therefore to God. I'm going to drop to verse eight. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep, and let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, under the, in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Then it goes into the next verse, which says, Speak not evil one of another. Uh, obviously, somebody was in their flesh, in their feelings. And, and they began to speak out what they heard and what they saw with their eye. What they could sense with their feelings. Rather than coming at this the way that God's saying, see it through my eyes, see it through me. He knows why that situation is even occurring. For he knows the thoughts, the minds, he knows the minds and the hearts of every man. He created the souls. James chapter 3 verse 15 says the wisdom this wisdom descends no verse 16 I'm, I'm saying for where envying and strife is there is confusion in every evil work but wisdom that is from above is first peace is fir first pure then peaceable gentle easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace and I, I said that because we need to know what true wisdom is what it is that God is giving us by his son Jesus Christ this is the son who has been appointed heir of all things of all things back to Hebrews chapter 1 again it says and let's read it again on many past occasions and in many different ways God spoke to our fathers through the prophets but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe the son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his nature upholding all things by his powerful word after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Go back to verse 2. God has appointed his son heir of all things, through whom he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his nature upholding all things by his powerful word after he had provided purification for sins for us he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high Colossians chapter 2 listen again to the to Colossians chapter 2 and, and the, the point here is verse 3 but I'm going to start in 2 and 2. That they may be encouraged in heart, knit together in love, and filled with the full riches of complete understanding, so that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Say this, so I, I say this so that no one will deceive you by smooth rhetoric you know when I come back to that verse in whom are hidden all the treasures of the wisdom and knowledge of God of God this is whom we who has been whose flesh has been marred for us so that the peace of God could abide in our hearts and we could live with God as as who he is he created us he made all men all men were made from God they come from him your soul came from God he created you 
and he created you with a purpose. But the purpose isn't in the world. It's in God. And it's through and by his son Jesus Christ, whom he has appointed heir of all things. And because he has created him heir of all things, this is who this is called submitting yourself to God. We are learning to submit ourselves to God. And after we learn to submit it, when we go through this process of learning how to submit ourselves to God, then we understand we have we we, we are able to to resist the devil. But first, <laughs> that's in James chapter 4, where it says, submit yourselves to God. You see, know him first. You, remember in uh, Matthew chapter 6, it talks about, um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all else will come after that. It was knowing God will supply all of my needs. It's knowing that the flowers in the field, they don't toil or spin. And, and look at the blades of grass and how glorious all that God has made is. They don't strain, they don't stress, they don't, they're not anxious about it. But they are supplied. All the need for that animal, all the need for anything in the world is supplied. But it's supplied by and through God without strife. We can come to him for anything. And he will tell you whether you need to care about that or not care about that. Bring that up or leave it alone. And the thing that he might tell you to do might seem completely crazy because the situation looks so out of hand. But that thing that is out of hand, it didn't just begin a minute ago. And God didn't like not see that coming. He knew that that situation was going to happen before you were ever born. It was known of. Before it became known to you, it was already known to God. And He created you with a heart to trust Him, with enough faith to trust Him. And they say that faith without works is dead. But I say that works, the works, the works are, are the, the, the believing God. The, the works are the, the fruit of the Spirit. Not just physical things that we can put together. But it's faith in the Word of God. And acting on that Word of faith. Work, I mean, work. What chapter was that? What, what, what word is that one? That one was... Uh, Galatians, is it? My, I didn't write that one down. I gotta go find it now. <laughs> Faith without works is is dead. Will works get you into the kingdom? Anyone can do works and not have the nature of of God. We're going to have to go look up that verse. But the point in that is that faith, <laughs> faith which works by love, a work can't be performed. I mean, anybody can, it, it's true, anybody can do a work, but if the faith isn't worked by that love that is in God and for God, how can it become what what we need it to be? so that we're living in the wisdom and in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of our Creator, who cre created us male and female and wants to bring peace to the situation. You do know why He wants to bring peace to the situation? Because it brings salvation to so many. Yes, it's for you, but it's for your family. And it's for it's for the neighbors next door. It's for the neighbors down the street. It's the, for the people on the job. It's for the people in the grocery store. It's for everyone and anyone that will be in contact with you and I today. Faith works by love. And that work is the work of the Spirit of God living in us to direct our steps. 
works without faith is dead. Understand that. Go, go, I don't mean, I'm not looking at you saying understand that. I mean, just go get an understanding of what it really is. That anybody can just go ahead and do religion. They can just go through the, the physical task of the labor. But who can submit themselves truly to God? Not to man. I know we submit ourselves to men. But to God. We're talking about God. He's invisible. <laughs> In Colossians chapter 2, again in 2, it says that we may be filled with the full riches of complete understanding. Complete understanding. My heart is like full of joy for this. That this is what we get when we submit ourselves to God complete understanding and a peace that surpasses all understanding because we trust him that's an awesome work I can do all things through Christ now who strengthens me because I trust him he takes out fear and but but the, here we come back to that love thing because love overcomes fear. Love is greater than fear. If we fear any situation, do we love God? How can His peace remain in us when we fear what we see and what we don't understand? It says right here in verse 2 of Colossians that they may be encouraged in, in heart knit together in love and filled with the full riches of complete understanding so that they may know the mystery of God namely Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge God is so good <laughs> and by the way the first verse said I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those Laodicea, those at Laodicea and who and for all who have not met me face to face. That's what what um the writer of this gospel is saying. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's not even with them and he wants them to understand this that he's struggling, how he's struggling for them, you know? Ah. Praise the Lord. Let's find that verse. So James chapter one, chapter uh, 2, verse starting in verse 14, What doth it profit, my brethren, through a, though a man say he has faith and have not works can faith save him if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto him depart in peace be ye warmed and filled notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body what does it profit even so faith if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, you, he has faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without works. Show me your faith without thy works, and I will show you faith by my works. He believe that there is one God, you believe that there is one God, thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, what faith without works, that faith without works is dead? See, God has compassion. And the na very nature of Christ in you causes you to have compassion for your brother and sister. 
This is the love that we have for one another. This is the fruit of the Spirit, the true nature of God living on the inside of you. To do that, to do that work, this, this work that works by love, this faith that works by love, this work that works by faith, is the nature of God living in you to perform those things that, that are right. That are right. That this is what puts you puts things in heaven for you. This is what stores things in heaven for you and not on the earth. Those things that you do that glorify your Father in heaven. I don't want to say it like that. And how do we get there? We get there by what we just talked about. Understanding, getting understanding through Christ. Understanding that we have to come through Him. We have to say the Word, the Word that He is. We get complete understanding through Christ Jesus, our Lord. It is submitting our mind, will, and emotions to Him every single moment of the day, every single day, with the intent that I would be led by the Spirit and not of the flesh. I love how He gives us wisdom and knowledge and how He causes us to walk in His ways. And His ways are that we would bless one another. Yes, that we would bless one another, that we would pray for one another without ceasing that we would lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is our salvation, not just the name. You see, religion just says the name, but it doesn't go into the understanding of the name. What is in that name? In the name of Yeshua is God is our salvation. He is the living God. He is the possessor of heaven and earth who has poured out his son. His, he poured out his son into our hearts. He poured, I can say it, he poured out our spirit, his spirit into our hearts so that we could become the likeness of his son. We can stop striving. We can walk and live in peace. We can have life the way that God said, more abundantly through Jesus Christ. And that abundance is in wisdom and it is in the knowledge of who He is. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Let's remember that, that the fruit of the Spirit, that is love, works in our hearts. And the work that is produced by faith helps one another, loves one another. I give you praise to God. I'll let you think about the rest because God is faithful and promised that he will deliver us from every bondage that we're in. I just need us to stop screaming about the situation, stop crying about the situation, stop going inside of yourself on the situation and let God be God. Let him be who he is. Call on his name. Say what he tells you to say. And do whatever he tells you to do. For he is faithful who promised that he would deliver you. And he, I mean, it's already, the deliverance, it's already been done. Jesus Christ finished it. It's just a matter of learning what faith really is. It's in the omnipresent God, the one who is with you every moment, even when you don't feel him, even when you don't recognize him in the situation, and you call Abba in Abba, Abba in his name. You call out on the name of the Lord, and he is mighty to do what he said. You are in the palm of his hand. Your situation is in the palm of his hand. He's got the whole thing. He's given you peace. He's giving you rest, rest for your soul. He's providing for that situation right now and giving you the answer. Be free. 
And this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson at Get the Word in Your Face and Turn National. Go to the website and make sure that you purchase the the items, the, you know, the index cards and the proverb vases and the bag of blessing and all that stuff because it will enrich your soul. It will enrich your spirit so that your spirit has power over your flesh, your mind, will, and emotions. And you could hear the word of the Lord. You just, We've just got to start eating this word every day and as many times a day as we can get our hand on it. Let it be put in our mouths. Let it be circulated in our thoughts so that we can bring down those high thoughts and take everything captive that is coming against the knowledge of God. And to God be the glory. To our Christ be all glory and power. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye.